Hi, I'm State Representative Bruce Ayers, and I want to thank you for tuning in to my legislative update. As a State Representative, I realize how important it is to keep my uh, constituents informed on issues we're deliberating over on Beacon Hill. Uh, my guest today is Representative Ruth Balzer. Our topic will be discussing senior citizen issues. Ruth happens to be the chairwoman on elder affairs at the State House. And Ruth, it's a pleasure to have you as my guest today. Thank you for inviting me here. It's a pleasure for me too. For some of the viewers, Ruth, um, before we get started, um, perhaps you could talk a little bit about uh, how you got interested in public service and uh, how you got started. Well, sure. Well, first I should mention I'm a state rep from the great city of Newton. Uh, and um, I'm actually a clinical psychologist by profession. Uh, and had and worked in psychology for many years before running for the legislature. But I was always very into politics and uh, very committed actually to social justice causes. Um, and then uh, while I was practicing as a psychologist, I ran to be on the Newton Board of Aldermen and served for eight years. And then I just got more and more into uh, seeing what good work we can do as public officials. and. When the opportunity presented itself, I ran for the legislature. Well, you know, it's it's one of the things I think that's so uh, important uh, at the state house. Of course, there's 160 state representatives, and we all come from different backgrounds. Right. You know, it's uh, it's great to have someone with your talents and knowledge on how we review this legislation. Um, as right. newly appointed uh, chair to the Elder of uh, Affairs Committee, perhaps you could talk uh, just a little bit about some of your uh, duties. Sure. Well, the uh, all the bills having to do with uh, what we call elder affairs, although some of us want to change the name, by the way. <laughs> we think elder is kind of a retro term. But, uh, but we look at all the legislation that's been filed that have to do with people who are aging in Massachusetts. Uh, and those bills, as chair, we schedule the public hearings. It's important for people to realize that no bill that gets filed doesn't have an opportunity for the public to weigh in. And so we you know, chair the meetings and uh, hold the public hearings and then lead the committee to consider all those legislative topics. You know, it's a great opportunity um, and I really appreciate you being on the show for us seniors because uh, technology is driving so much change in a lot of industries now. Uh -huh. And as uh, legislators, one of the things I've always found that we have to constantly keep kind of updating some of the laws. You right. know, they become outdated, uh, particularly with technology today. And one of the things that I find when I'm talking to seniors is, uh, you know, some of the struggles or concerns that they have. And it's great to actually have an opportunity to meet with them to help them file a bill or draft a bill with different ideas. And, you know, this uh, is a service I know that each state rep uh, provides to their constituents. If right. they have an idea for a bill or some type of legislation they'd like to uh, put forward, you know, we're, we're there for them. Right, absolutely. And I think there's a lot more interest in uh, the issues of for older people. I mean, we're living in a very um, kind of interesting time as far as that. People are living longer. Uh, people are working longer. People are healthier. Uh, the, uh, and at the younger age, people are having fewer children. And so older adults are becoming an increasing uh, increasingly large part of our population. Yeah. So we, uh, we in politics need to listen to them. <laughs> oh, I should say to us. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I, I was reading a statistic somewhere where they said uh, in 2020, yeah. the first time uh, seniors will uh, be the largest population. Right, you it's know? really something. And, and that's creating new challenges because there are issues around housing, mm -hmm. making sure there are more housing people as they're older, often like to live in a different kind of setting, um, more you know, single floor, near transit. You know, there are issues that come up as one ages uh, that are reflected, it maybe need some help uh, with certain um, you know, tasks of daily living. Uh, so there are all these challenges and those are the challenges I think we look at at our committee uh, is uh, what to do about housing and supports for sure. older people. Yeah, it always puts a uh, fresh perspective on yes. things. You know, right. uh, that's right. To hear their concerns, to help them with their quality of life. That's right. You know, um, uh, of course, recently the, the big thing is we completed the House budget, the yes. $43.1 billion budget. Right. And I know that uh, a lot of uh, our priorities, your priorities, uh, dealing with seniors, uh, such as the Mass Health nursing home, supplemental uh, bill right. 
Perhaps you could talk a little bit about that. Yeah, well, it's it's interesting because uh, perhaps some of your you know viewers are aware that there's been a lot of conversation about what's being referred to as a crisis in the nursing home industry. A lot of nursing homes have been closing, uh, and there's a lot of concern about that. And uh, one of the important pieces of the budget that we passed was we put in language to create a task force that would really tackle the issue. Some of it has to do with funding, which is that the state has really been underfunding Medicaid, which is one of the biggest payers for nursing homes. And so we put in that extra uh, $50 million, a significant chunk, uh, to support nursing homes. But some of the closings, uh, there's a positive side. Some of it is because we've been successful in making it possible for more seniors to stay in their own homes and in their communities. And so some of the closings is because of uh, the success yeah. of the home care you know, folks, the home care associations. Uh, you and I ran into, as we were coming into the studio, someone in Quincy who works does home care for oh, seniors. Sure. That's right. Uh, so what we want to do from the legislature's point of view is understand the whole thing. What do we need to do to make sure that there are enough nursing home beds for people who, when they need to go there, will have that opportunity? Mm -hmm. But how do we also make sure that home care and other community supports also have the support so that if people don't choose not to go into a nursing home, they have what they need. Yeah, it, it's so important. Like you say, there's a, a, a lot of moving parts. Right. Whether you know, these laws are being changed down in Washington or in Boston or funding formulas, it, it can be tough. Right. The industry's constantly changing. You know, and I, I think that's a, uh, one of the other things that we did address, the Nursing Home uh, Stability Task Force. Uh, yeah. Right, uh, th that's exactly right. And yeah. in fact, I'll have the opportunity to, uh, to serve on that because the way it was set up, the uh, Secretary of Health and Human Services will chair it, but the two, the House and Senate chairs of Elder Affairs will be on it. And a number of seniors who are advocates uh, will serve on it as well and will really tackle uh, this issue. Yeah, you know, it's great to, because in that dynamic of ever changing, you know, it's so important, as you know and I know, to, to be able to set some of these short and long range goals. That's right. You know, um, and to make sure there's going to be proper funding for them or at least anticipate what's coming down the road. That's right. You know, um, and another big component, I, which I know you're familiar with, is the uh, uh, elder mental health component. Well, yes, that's something I've been involved with for quite a long time because, as I mentioned, I'm a clinical psychologist by profession. I've always focused on mental health public policy in, during my years in the legislature. And one of the programs I've advocated for is what we call geriatric mental health, uh, which is really just making sure mental health services are available to older adults. But it's really important because a lot of um, people, a lot of times uh, family members or even caregivers think someone is uh, needs to go to a nursing home because maybe they've slowed down, maybe they're having trouble getting out of bed, maybe, and they think, oh, they're old, they need, and it, you know, it may turn out that it's a depression that hasn't been treated, you know, or an anxiety. Mm -hmm. uh, there are mental health conditions that can be treated, and with the right treatment, that can, you know, make sure that aging adults continue to be vibrant and full members of the community. So I was thrilled that we increased the funding this year for the geriatric mental health services. It's certainly well needed. And another uh, area we've been able to add some money is to the councils on aging. Yes, that's right. I know you've been very involved locally with your council and with uh, these are the programs that uh, provide services for seniors living in the community. They, they sure do. And, you know, um, it's nice to be able to produce this show because some of the seniors watching might not really have an opportunity maybe to get out to the Council on Aging's or learn about services that they might be entitled to that they, uh, they're they not aware of. Uh, I'm very lucky in my district. Um, of course, we have a large senior population and a very active, two very active uh, Council on Aging's, you uh -huh. know. Uh, and the services they run, uh, you know, w whether it's South Shore Elder Services or the Quincy or Randolph Council on Aging, uh, Meals on Wheels. Right. Um, what I hear from my constituents is, you know, they, they want to remain independent. Right. They want to remain at home. Uh, they want to make sure that they have financial stability, uh, that their health care costs are, are, are controllable. And when you look at the services that these uh, Council on Aging's run, they, they offer all that. They offer right. advice, legal advice. 
Um, they offer opportunities for tax incentives, uh, Meals on Wheels. I, I had a neighbor of mine who was uh, legally blind, and he lived with his sister who had some mobility problems. And uh, of course, they, they wanted to remain independent and at home living together, but they had trouble uh, with their meals. Uh -huh. And with the South Shore Elder Services Meals on Wheels program, uh, it just filled that need and they were able to live at home uh, for, for many, many years. That's great. Yeah, That's but great. Uh, there's a lot of services out there. Uh, the transportation service, you know, uh, people going to med medical appointments. Right. Uh, Quincy and Boston hospitals, that transportation is offered. Um, services to other appointments, more social, uh, whether they're going to be picking up uh, pharmaceutical drugs or shopping, things like that are also offered. Right. It's good to remind people that government uh, government can really be there uh, for people. Sometimes you hear all this anti-government stuff, and it's good to remind people. I mean, this is, you know, for older adults, it's really important because people really do want to age in place, as we say. People really do want to be able to stay in their own communities. And as much as we can, you know, help make that happen with these kinds of sensible programs, I think it's really important. Yeah, it's great, you know, because it's it just uh, so important to them uh, to, to kind of fill some of those needs that they have. Right. Know. One of the challenges that has come up in the committee is a crisis in the workforce. Uh, one of the problems is that home care workers and nursing home uh, workers aren't paid terribly well and there's a lot of turnover and you know a lot of people move on to new other jobs. So one of the things that on the committee we want to take a look at is this workforce challenge and how to make sure that direct care workers, human services workers, get a, a living wage themselves because that's what will keep people, you know, older people living in their homes and sure. being productive members of the community. It sure is, you know, and, and that's a, a great point, Ruth, because, you know, you want to make sure that uh, your loved one is being cared for, that's well right. cared for, and people deserve to be compensated for that type of service. That's right. And it, it takes a, a special person. They need to have a lot of empathy, mm -hmm. caring, uh, kindness, and support right. you know, for someone who might have some daily challenges. That's right, so exactly. Uh, it uh, really is a, a special person. Right. You know? Well, you've been a real champion for older people. I know especially on the Alzheimer's issue. You've been a real, you, I attended a session recently where you were honored and thanked oh, thank you. by the community for all your leadership on that issue. Well, it, it's near and dear to me. My um, my mom had suffered from oh, Alzheimer's, I'm and sorry. Uh, when my father Charlie died, my uh, brother Chuck and I kind of resumed the caretaking responsibilities. Uh -huh. But uh, we we were lucky; we were able to keep my mom at home. Uh, I only lived a few doors up on the same street. My brother uh, wasn't far away, so we used to uh, uh, take turns sleeping over at night. Uh, our wives were supportive. Um, they probably That's wanted nice. us out of the house, too. <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, you know, uh, you, you did what you had to do. We, we were able to make it work. We had some help during the day. Uh, but, um, you know, it was, it was a little, little bit of a learning curve. Oh. You know, so uh, well, now when you see the legislation at the state house, it's nice right. to kind of have that uh, personal knowledge. Right. Well, it's also it's a wonderful example of trying to draw on your own experience to help support others who are going to go through that. And that Alzheimer's legislation, which you were one of the leaders on, uh, is really important. Uh, one of the things it did was create a commission on Alzheimer's that I now serve on. And I'm learning so much about early onset Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. uh, which is something you know that hadn't been talked about so much before. It, it, yeah. it really hasn't, you know. And uh, again, getting back to you know getting legislation uh, drafted and coming up with new ideas is, of course, one of the main emphasis of this show. Uh, we certainly want people to take away because I had a constituent come to me whose wife, uh, unfortunately, came down with early onset. Wow. Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. And she was in her late 40s. Oh. And That's it was nice. just a tough uh, adjustment, you know, for the whole family. Um, her husband uh, actually had to, as things progressed, uh, retire early. And then it put a, an awful lot of uh, financial burdens on their, their budget. You know, so right. unfortunately, she wasn't able to qualify for any state assistance with Mass oh. Health. Oh. So uh, that prompted us, uh, the constituent, myself, to us to um, file a bill. And what this bill does, it, requ it re removes the age restriction. Oh. Right now, it's age 60. Yes. So with that restriction out, 
it would have opened it up to his wife. That's really important. Uh, on the Alzheimer's Commission, which, as I say, was created because of the legislation, uh, the Secretary of Health and Human Services invited a number of people who were living with early onset to come and speak with us. And uh, it was very powerful testimony, but that's what they all talked about, that they were cut off from services because they were in their 40s or 50s. Uh, and one of the goals of the commission, it, consistent with the kind of work you've been doing, is to make sure that people at those ages who suffer from that challenge will be connected to the services and be, in, and be eligible yeah. for the services. Absolutely, and you know, it, you're hearing more and more about it, that right. families are affected. They, they probably know somebody, maybe have a family member or a friend that this uh, disease is uh, affecting. Right. You know? And uh, when we did some of the statistics, you know, there really wasn't a lot with the early onset. So right. it was something that, you know, made sense to pursue. We looked at other states throughout the country to see how they addressed this type of uh, bill, and we uh, worked with a lot of the uh, language in some of those bills to craft our bill. Uh huh. That's and, great. But uh, it worked out good. We have over 120 co-sponsors. Wow. So good we're, for you. Yeah. So we're 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 optimistic. Yes. You know, and um, you, you've been great on it with bills uh, like that. So we we really appreciate that support. Right. Right, well, we'll work on that together this session. Great. You know, uh, and one thing I hear from constituents, too, is uh, there's an awful lot of uh, scams out oh, there nowadays. Yes. Y you know, uh, so we, we certainly want to caution seniors who might be uh, on the receiving end of that, whether they receive a phone call or something in the mail or something like that, just, just to be cautious, you know. Absolutely. Especially with uh, the new technology, depending on what type of uh, mobile device they have, if they have one, mm -hmm. it, can be, uh, it can be intimidating. Right. You know, so right. We, we really want to um, kind of let seniors know that if something doesn't quite, you know, meet what it should to, to give us a call. You know, our offices, they can, yes. they obviously can contact us. We can um, let them know whether it's legitimate or not. If it's something that's not legitimate, we can make uh, the proper authorities aware of it. Right. Whether it's the attorney general's office or the local police department. Right. And to notify, you know, uh, people that something like this might be out there. Uh, right, absolutely. Um, you know, what do you, uh, what do you find is the best way for seniors um, to advocate for themselves to ensure they're receiving the right benefits from the state? Well, uh, you know, um, well, one part of it is the same. I would uh, encourage anyone to advocate. I mean, first of all, people, you know, one of the things that concerns me these days is so much cynicism about government, partly because of all the stories coming out of Washington. And I like where things are, you know, uh, distressing. But I like to remind people that at the state level and the local level, they really have representatives who are very responsive. You know, we maintain a personal relationship with uh, our constituents. They can, you know, I know the same for you as for me. Any constituent can call me, and if they want to have a meeting with me, uh, I'll meet with them either at the State House or in Newton Center, you know, in my district at a coffee shop. Uh, 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 and I know you do the same and have a district office. So, first of all, but with seniors is being, you know, first of all, make sure you know who your state rep and your state senator is. Uh, call them, email, you know, write, come to the state house. Also, link up with some of the senior advocacy organizations because there's a voice for seniors uh, on, you know, on Beacon Hill who come up and advocate for uh, all these important pieces of legislation. Yeah, there, there really is, you know, uh, whether it's uh, programs dealing with their health, the nutrition, mm -hmm. a lot of these things come into play. You know, uh, as you and I both know, we, we hear from uh, seniors about the high cost of pre prescription drugs. Uh, maybe uh, with a senior network, uh, they can uh, combine resources and different programs that might be available to, right. to them. You know, one of the... Uh, services, uh, and again, I'm not sure if the seniors know about it, but um, I know the Quincy delegation um, did a show not too long ago on the uh, senior circuit breaker. Oh, yes. Yeah. Very and that's, important. That's something that's offered to seniors also. It's a, it's a prop property tax abatement. Right. And it's a, a service out there for seniors in the Commonwealth. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty easy application to fill out. Certainly want to encourage uh, seniors to contact us or uh, find out more information off the uh, internet, excuse me, the internet, the website. Sure. But uh, 
I was doing some of the statistics. Uh, the average tax abatement that some of my constituents were eligible for uh, was nine hundred dollars. Wow, <laughs> that's real money. It is. It's real money. <laughs> what an average. You know, in, in, uh, <laughs> we we all know seniors are they're living on a fixed budget. Yes. Uh, and it, it's hard. The other costs keep uh, increasing. Yes. And and there's also help for seniors. Uh, one one senior um, whose uh, husband had passed away. Uh, he he was always the one who did uh, the books. He oh. always paid the bills. Oh. He always paid the taxes. And uh, when he passed away, she inherited uh, that responsibility. Uh -huh. And it, it can be uh, intimidating, right. uh, particularly around the taxes. You know, uh -huh. uh, people feel vulnerable. But uh, when she inquired about the uh, the senior circuit uh, breaker, uh, we had informed her that you know there's people out there to help you. Right. And she uh, got help with the application. She applied for the application. She right. was eligible, and uh, she got up to nine hundred dollars back from that's that. That's great, yeah. right? Yes, and that's true in our community as well. In Newton, the senior services uh, folks are available for people to come in and help and get that kind of advice and yes. counsel. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, and that's that's some of the, the, the things that they worry about. You know, and another uh, great uh, thing just ended up at the senior centers too, which is more of a social aspect. But uh, the uh, in my district, we have a pretty uh, vibrant uh, senior Olympics. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> it is. Uh -huh. You know, uh, each year it seems to get bigger and bigger. Yeah. There's some great uh, games that they all play, and uh -huh. it just brings the senior community so much closer together. You right. know, at the end they have an awards banquet, and uh, they get their medals. Uh -huh. But uh, you know, again, it's it's just something where where you and I see the importance of our senior centers and how that money kind of trickles down at the end of the day, where it goes, working with our directors. Right. And, you know, uh, I, I think it's a, a quality of life issue at the end of the day. Right. And we hear from, I mean, the uh, we hear from the leaders in the senior centers. Uh, I know the leader in Newton always gets in touch at least every year around budget time uh, to remind me, not that I would forget, but that to really advocate, uh, especially for that Council on Aging uh, appropriation that's so important to help the local senior services. It sure is. It sure is. You know, in one program I always try to uh, make sure people are familiar with that I run is the uh, Helping Hand program. Oh, nice. You know, uh, I'm fortunate um, in Quincy because uh, I have a lot of residents uh, that will donate to the Helping Hand program. And basically how it works is people donate um, durable medical equipment. Oh. Um, Items such as wheelchairs, walkers, crutches, canes, commodes that they may uh, no longer need. A lot of times uh, these items are in their attic or their basement just taking up room. Mm -hmm. we, we take them, we store them at our facility in North Quincy, and we just turn around and give it to people free of charge. Oh, that's great. Yeah, because, you know, right. there's a lot of generous people out there. Yes. And um, some of the costs associated with uh, some of these items, it can be expensive. Right, absolutely. You know, we just, uh, we just had a woman uh, donate an electric hospital bed the other day. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, so uh -huh. uh, we certainly encourage people to, to contact us to see uh, if there's an item they might need. Uh huh. Oh, nice. Uh. That's great. Uh, any other topics you want to uh, touch upon? Um, so let's see. I mean, there's uh, there's so many different issues uh, I work on. I work on, you know, in addition to the elder issues, mm -hmm. uh, I work on environmental issues. Uh, I've been uh, advocating for many years for something called the Public Lands Preservation Act, oh. which would protect our parkland. Mm -hmm. uh, this important. year, I'm very interested in uh, climate action. Uh, legislation actually in the legislature we both voted for something last week that was great a green works program mm -hmm. that would uh, give actually it was a great program that we uh, the state would uh, give grants to municipalities for energy efficient programs uh, so climate is big on sure. uh, on our agenda and that's you know that's related to seniors because it's about the future seniors care about protecting their grandchildren, you know, and <laughs> future right. generations. Uh, 
you know, so uh, I'm involved a lot with climate action wow. legislation this session. Well, you, you do a uh, great job, Ruth, and it's, it's great to serve on your committee, and I, I really appreciate you being a guest on the show. Thank you. It's yeah. a pleasure to be here. Uh, they're telling me our, our time is uh, just about up, but uh, I want to thank the uh, viewers for uh, tuning in to my legislative update. Certainly, if uh, you'd like more information on some of the topics we discussed, uh, or if want any information on other things or even meet, we encourage you to contact our office. Um, and I want to thank QA TV for allowing us to produce this show. Thanks for tuning in.